biggest thing you gave me was time. You didn't really know me. We were from the same neighborhood and area, but I was with a group of guys that wanted to go to college, wanted to play ball. And you actually gave us that reality that, hey, this could actually happen because we saw somebody that was like us and that we wanted to become. Recruiting is about relationships. It's built on trust. It's built on doing the right things. And it's built on your head coaches and your athletic director, their vision. And I think we have two great leaders, both of those positions. So it makes it easy for me to go out and, and do what I do. Be aggressive. Let's win. Here we go. We're excited to have you on, um, and and I like I said, it's a it's a it's a discussion yeah. mode, and uh, and so we'll we'll just jump right in, and, and and I'll let you take us through your path from from coaching. Well, I think you started in private business, but we don't have to talk about that unless you want to. But from coaching all the way until until now, where you've um, in a situation where you are running a search firm, a top flight search firm in, in athletics uh, across the country. So I'm, I'm going to give you the floor. No, thank you, Van. And uh, yeah, it was, um, I think all your experience, you know, culminate to, to what you are, what you want to be and, and, and kind of always striving for that. And for me, you know, I was a coach for seven years at Binghamton University. Um, you know, I had a great time. I loved, you know, just, the 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 interaction with players the relationships that you build with families you know because you're you know they're entrusting you with their son right yeah. to to develop them and and when they graduate they're they're equipped to you know um be productive citizens and and and, and live a great life so that was a that was a unique and rewarding experience for me um you know, obviously when you're in athletics or in the industry you you know there's trends and and um you know obviously it's not just privy to athletics um it's in professional sports or on the corporate side but you know just a lack of diverse talent and and um leadership positions and for me in my journey i've come across some dynamic dynamic leaders um uh, and they haven't you know, they didn't have the chance or never had the opportunity to be a head coach, to be an AD. And, and when you look at it and you see the hiring practices and trends and um, especially from the search standpoint, uh, they don't look like us, right? Um, typically, right? So as a whole, as industry. So, you know, for me, being a coach um, and my passion for helping people, I also have passion for, um, making sure people have opportunities that deserve opportunities. And if I can be a conduit for that, that is, that, that, that makes me feel great. Right. And, um, I, I knew that there was a, there was an opportunity for me to start my own search firm because prior to being a coaching, I was on the corporate side of town acquisition, doing a lot of searches, you know, for fortune 100, 500 companies. And with my, knowledge and and just uh, i would say familiarity with college athletics and just athletics as a whole i thought that was, that was a good opportunity for me to start a firm right something mm -hmm. different something rooted in diversity equity and inclusion you know partnering with institutions or corporations um to make sure there there's diverse uh candidate pools and and what we're doing the right things to make sure qualified individuals have opportunities wow and and so that re that really you 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 rip my next question right out of my hand, uh, and so I I know what you do. But if you had a if you had a crystal ball, if you had a magic wand, how do you think your industry could improve in that way? Because I know, and and you know, I have a good relationship, and I and I know who you are and what you do. But again, it's not it's not that way in your industry. Right. So so so, what do you think is the is the cure uh, for for our, our lack of diversity in that space you know and and how can your industry uh outside your firm be improving in this place yeah absolutely i think it's human nature to rely on your social network 
to find people that you want to work with or give opportunities to, right? And I think in athletics uh, in particular, we do, that's a practice that is, that is um, very prevalent in the industry, right? So obviously if you're going to hire or, um, you know, advocate for people, they're like you, um, you know, they're going to probably be the situations or industries as a whole really don't expand that, that pool, right? They, uh, you know, sometimes it is uncomfortable hiring someone you may not know, but from an experience standpoint, they could bring a lot to the table. Right. And I think, you know, for, um, you know, ADs or decision makers, it's expanding their social networks. It's expanding, you know, hey, you know what, I do know this group of people, but I need to know, you know, this group of people and, and these individuals over here, right? And I think it, it, it will, it will, um, develop into a more diverse pool. So I, I do think we lean on our personal net networks a lot. We have to expand those. You have to be intentional with that, right? right I think you right. have to be self-aware and say, you know what, man, I may, I may not know a lot of people of color. I may not know a lot of women in leadership positions or, you know, whatever position that you're looking at uh, uh, or coaches, maybe I need to expand that. And I think that's something at the very basic level that you could do, right? right. And, um, and I think you'll be surprised or people will be surprised on how their network will grow. So I think at a fundamental level, I think that's what, you know, in athletics, we could do better. Right. And I, I, I always say, I always use the term that, that uh, there is strength in diversity. And, yes. and you made that point in that, you know, when you have a person, which, you alluded to it earlier as well. Uh, searches are, I mean, they, they go very fast in athletics. They yes. go very quickly and, and there's pressure from the outside for them to go very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in that place, what do you do? You, you go to what, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? You go to what you, what you really feel you can trust. And that's like, that's a human, uh, human characteristic. That's, that's what we do. But, I think that the challenge, like you said a second ago, the challenge is, is to expand your thought, is to broaden your perspective and to, you know, to challenge yourself, like you said, to be yeah. intentional about the relationships that you have. But I think coaches of color have a, a responsibility in that as well to expand their networks as well, to, to step out and to make sure that we are doing a good job of of reaching, uh, of interacting. And I don't want like to, uh, sometimes I use the term network, but I, I like to say developing relationships, you know, because it's not about what you know. And, and it's not even about who you know, it's more about who knows you. And so to, to be intentional about forming, growing relationships, uh, I think is very important on both sides of, of the fence when you talk about this matter. You made some great points because I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think decision makers need to, you know, put people around them, right, of diverse backgrounds. So when they do have a search, they can lean on their team. And if their team is diverse, you're probably going to get a, a diverse talent pool, right? right. Uh, if you have that diverse um, environment, but, you know, um, to the to the coach's standpoint, you know, I think coaches have a tough time um being uncomfortable especially in terms of building relationships uh you know and i and i think i always call it the low-hanging fruit right i think there's there's so many administrators on campus that they could develop relationships with the swa the wad the provost the chancellor where you, those are already established relationships right. that they will listen and talk with you right. and you can develop that because you know what, at the end of the day, those administrators, um, they're not going to be there forever, right? right. They're going to go on to different institutions. Then you have people speaking on your behalf and that's it. Then that's easy. Right? right. And then you can ask them, Hey, I know you're at this school, love to meet, you know, with you or, you know, the other chancellor or the other AD there, you know, that's how it works. But I think if you're more intentional where you are now, uh, you can make that work for you. Right. Which, which is, um, the, I think that, um, what you said is, you know, coaches don't necessarily have the time 
Okay. Mm-hmm. But you got to make the time. And then the, the level of comfort uh, is, is not always there, but again, you have to be intentional about it. So let's go back. Let's go back to you. Right. And, mm-hmm. and as you've gone through your career, who are some of the, the best leaders that you've been around because you're in a position right now of leadership. So who do you model? Who are the people that you model your leadership after? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. You know, for me, I've, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of different coaches and administrators and leaders. And, um, and one that comes off the top of my head is, is George Raveling. Uh, you know, uh, coach, uh, he lives in LA. We met a few years ago. Um, you know, even though he's not in coaching, he's, you can learn so much from someone who's been through it. Right. right? And, and, uh, I've learned a ton, a ton from, from coach Raveling. He, he's been great. Um, Ed Scott, who is the, uh, um, Dr. Scott now, you know, is the uh, AD at Morgan state. We worked together at Binghamton university. I thought he, I, 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 he is a great leader. Uh, I see how he he manages his team and, and how he uh, interacts with people and just the kind of charisma that he has. Right. I think mm-hmm. no, I've, I've learned a, a, a ton from him. Um, you know, there's there's certain coaches that I that I look at. Right. Um, you know, just being in the business that I've, I've taken some of their leadership styles, whether, you know, Diedrich Taylor, who I think is another very charismatic individual and mm-hmm. makes time for people and mm-hmm. makes you feel like you're, you're special in that moment. Right. right. And I think, yes. you know, all those things, you know, especially when I was coaching, you know, you look up to those individuals, right. And, right. and then when they give you that time and attention, yes. Yes. Um, it's, it's a difference maker, right. In terms of how you view them and then, and, and just how you feel. So mm-hmm. now that, I'm in a position to help people like they were in a position to help me. I want to make sure that I do give time and I do make myself available and I am accessible because that when, that, when it was done to me, it, it made the difference, it, the biggest difference in the world. You got a million things on your plate, but you know, when you're talking to that one person, that one person should matter right then and there and, and making them feel wanted and included and all that. So those, those are some good examples of people who, who do that on a daily basis. Well, you made, you made that <laughs> the last point that you made, I, I remember, and I'm talking from a, from the standpoint of a coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember uh, years ago meeting with my players, you know, so y- your players come in and they want to meet with you, but as a coach, right, we all have these phones t- attached yeah. to our fingers. And so I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm, I'm answering a text or I'm doing this. And, and the player is, is sitting in front of me. And uh, I don't remember. I heard a speaker and, and they talked about um, they talked about when, when you are dealing with people. And they, it, it, I, like I said, it was something that I heard or listened. To. It was something in passing, but it took me back to that interaction with that player. Yeah. And it made me realize really a life changing moment is that that player came in here. He wanted me. He wanted all of me. He wanted my time. And, and here I, I'm sitting here texting and I'm not giving him me. Right. And so, um, from that moment, I I just, I, I made a decision as a coach that, Hey, when, if a player comes in here, player comes to sit with me nice. if I'm yeah. engaged, right? And, and so I have kids and of course your kids, they don't care. They yeah. <laughs> but, but when it comes to people beyond your kids, they just, you, you're just kind of building a wall. And so when we take that all the way back to leadership, it's the art of influencing men, mm-hmm. right? You, you can't force them to do it. It's a dictatorship but right. you influence them to do it. You convince them to follow you. And if, if there's a wall built, because when I have a problem coach or when there's something on my mind, coach, I come in here and you're giving me a third of your attention. And I say in here, but you know what I mean? I'm, Absolutely. I'm, and so um, since that time, I think, you know, that is my relationships with my players. They've grown. Well, I'm gonna go to the next question and, and it really, it really comes to who or, or the types of leaders 
that you look for when, when you are filling a search, let's say a, a head football search, what are, what are some characteristics that you look for in a coach that you would want to place before a university? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, obviously the most important thing is someone at the, at their core foundation is wanting is very passionate about building student athletes, right? Cause that's why they're there. They're there to develop and enhance, uh, you know, student athletes, both in that sport, you know, whether it's football and personally, right? So I think one, that having a track record of that Two, you know, obviously everyone, I, I, I think, you know, obviously the integrity piece, right? I think, what does your reputation say? Who, what, what is, what are people saying about you, right? I think, you know, that is, that is very important. Who you are, you can give me a portfolio, um, a resume or whatever, but I wanna know who you really are, right? You can put whatever you want on paper, but that that doesn't really matter, right? I think, you know, your actions speak a lot more, a lot louder, right? How do you how do you coach your players? Um, you know, how do you interact with people in the community? You know, those are all the things that are super important. Are you a teacher, right? Because at the end of the day, you're teaching, right? The the game, and I think you have to be an effective communicator, to especially today. Mm -hmm. um with today's student athletes where i always call it you're you're battling for for you know space right in their brain right they got social media they got class they, they might have they have a social life so you're competing with a lot of different factors so your communication has to be on point right and not only for your players but for your for for the community where everyone can get involved and then lastly i would think or i would say can you articulate a vision and do we get excited about it, right? If you can't, if you can't articulate that and people can't get on board and, and, and you're telling me, you know what, this is the culture we're gonna build here at, at K-State and this is what we're gonna do and I can't close my eyes and visualize it and get behind it and get excited, right. then you know, you're probably not the person because at the end of the day, leadership, not only, yes, you have to lead and you have to give that vision but right. you also have to, you know, you also have to manage, right? And you also have, there's, there's that piece of it too. So how do you, after you set that vision, how are you managing your staff, your players, your program on a day-to-day -day basis to, to execute that? And if that's not crystal clear, then I don't think, you know, you might not be ready yet, right? Or if, I, if we can't see that. So, I mean, those are, those are the things I think are really important in identifying coaches especially leadership right mm -hmm. and it's, it's, the, it's the vision culture how they're going to implement it and how they're going to manage that on a day-to-day -day basis okay right and you know I, I, I in my role and we've talked about it here at, at k-state i've had the opportunity you know coach Kleiman has given me the opportunity as an assistant head coach to to sit in some of those situations those mm -hmm. meetings those places where I can and I have had a tremendous learning experience uh, so that as an assistant coach, you never you, you never see anything past who you deal with. Yeah. You, know, you never see anything past your running backs and you never see anything past if you are the coordinator, your side of the ball, whereas a head coach is is dealing with things that happen all over the program and outside the program. And so to have the opportunity to to be in those places, I, I, I gather, I, I see exactly what you're talking about, how managing people, because we deal with conflict, you know, that could happen between staff members. We definitely deal with conflict between players. We deal with conflict between people in the uh, support area and a player, you know, yeah. and so to, to be able as a head coach to, to mm -hmm. manage that, uh, is like I said, when I watch Coach Kleiman, I've learned a tremendous amount because um, I know some other head coaches who would have, you know, gone off the deep end mm -hmm. in certain situations. But but he's done a great he does a great job of managing that. And so for me as a a coach who aspires to be a head coach, I think that's big time beneficial uh, having an opportunity to to be in this place. Yeah. 
but to that, you've had to earn that trust, right? right. For, for, for Coach Kleiman to include right. you into that. And I think, right. um, you know, obviously trust is earned. And I think and as an assistant, you have to make sure that you're doing everything that you can, number one, to earn that trust, obviously do your job at a high level. But when you are doing that, I hope that you have the, the relationship to say, you know what, coach, hey, I, I'm still continuing to grow and I would love yeah. to be included in these meetings, right? right. I always say a closed right. mouth never gets fed. That's so right. Even, you know, it would be nice for a coach to say, you know what, I see you're, you're busting your tail, you're doing a great job for the program, I'm gonna include you in that. But, you know, if they don't do that, it's on you to ask, right. you know, right. and, and to take on those additional responsibilities and take off stuff that maybe you can take off his plate. Right. Um, and, and, and getting that experience, it's, it, it's so key. Cause like you said, you don't know until you're in those rooms and right. you can practice it all you want, or you can go up until you're in a, in a room with, you know, 200, 300 donors and you're speaking to them or you're in uh, you know, a uh, head coaches meeting, you know, uh, you know, department meeting and, and you're giving updates and what you need to do. You can't really practice that. You got to be in it to experience right. it. So no, I, I do think it's, it's so important that coaches ask that additional responsibility when, when, when the time's ready. Right. And, and, it, and like I said, it's, it's been a great experience. And that is one thing that I, <clears throat> that I do because I, I kind of take it as, yes, I am gaining from it, uh, having an opportunity to be in that position, but I also uh, take it as, you know, what can I do to make his job easier? What yeah. can I do in my process to to make it be an easier situation as a head coach uh, for him? One final question, and this is always kind of a cool question, uh, but th if you could talk to your younger self, what would you tell that guy that you know uh, now? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that, that is a great question is, you know, that self-reflection. One, the power of relationships, right? And, and, and how I think we get consumed. I was consumed with path and how to get there and big picture, but not really focusing on the, the relationships and, and, and the people around me and, and, and really being due diligent in, in developing those, right? I think, mm -hmm. you know, when I was younger and I look at the people that were kind of involved in my life and, and where they are now, a lot of them doing great things, right? And some of them, I built those relationships, some I haven't talked to in 15 years, right? So I think the power of relationships trumps, you know, um, I wouldn't say getting great grades, but you know what I mean? There's that balance, right. you know what I mean? Right. I think you, you got to have the balance of, right. of that. And I think we can get consumed with, you know, I got to make sure I get a hundred, hundred, hundred instead of, you know what, let me, let me, let me develop this relationship here. Right. Let me, you know, let me be more intentional with that. So that would be the first thing. Uh, you know, obviously the power of relationships to run your own race. I would never imagine, you know, being a business owner when I'm younger, right. Or, or, um, doing some of the things that I've done or experienced or, um, but you know, you have this preconceived path that you see yourself going down. And I think you can exclude yourself from a lot of opportunities or you right. just blind yourself to that instead of, you know, running your own race. You know right. what I mean? Uh, you see, you know, especially in coaching, we see one coach, he gets a job here or that, you know, how, how does that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But you know what? Run your own race. Everyone's right. got a different path. And, um, and it could be frustrating at times, but, you know, whether you're a person of faith or not, for me, it's, you know what? I am, I'm supposed to be where I am, right? right. Like I, I'm, I'm here and I'm supposed to be here, right? Yeah. And I'm going to let everything else take care of itself. So, you know, those are the two biggest things I would tell my younger self. You know, everyone, when you're younger, you're, you're, you're ambitious and you yeah. just try to go get it, you know, right? You know, be settled where you are, take your time, build relationships, and things will fall into place. I would definitely, I would give myself that advice for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, those, those are the questions that I had. And, man, I, I really appreciate you again for, for jumping on. And um, what, I, what we'll do is we'll, Pat, We'll work behind the scenes to get this yeah. all cleaned up for us. 
and then uh, and then we'll post it and we'll of course share it with you. Absolutely. And one one of the things again, I go back to doing this and how how beneficial I think it has been because some of the things that we talked about earlier in terms of relationships, you know, the fact that we've had ADs and conference commissioners, man, those are relationships. And mm -hmm. one thing I try to do is when I have someone on. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm checking back in with them, yes. you know, and, and it's, it's kind of funny that uh, the other day I was, you know, going back through all the people we had on here <clears throat> and you said it a second ago that that person is not going to be at uh, the college of Charleston forever. The commissioner of the West coast conference, Gloria Navarre, she's not yeah. going to be there forever. No, you not. know what I mean? But uh, just to have a relationship with these people, uh, again, going to coaches, man, we, we spending our time working on scheme cover three, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have to, which again, I've just been blessed for Pat and those guys to help me to be able to do this because this is not only when I talk about how it helps me, because I can see that clearly, but I've also heard and, and talked to and seen a lot of people that information like this that you're giving how it is helping other people mm -hmm. you know and so and again i appreciate you thank you for for jumping in with us and uh um i'm gonna let you have the rest of your day no no thank you for including me in this this is this is special man and i obviously love having the conversation i love the format this how you know this how the conversation is so you know, natural, which is, mm -hmm. which is awesome. So, uh, no, man, I'm here for it, man. And, and obviously anything I can help with and okay. anything that you can, any way you can use me, please do it. Sure. Uh, God, for sure. I'm here for it.